in terms of a demonstration and then uh, go to definition of the concept, present data, a data table, we've seen that. Linear and nonlinear data, and then we've uh, graphed that linear nonlinear data. We know what linear data means. You know, if the gaps are the same between position or whatever the numbers are, the gaps are the same. I actually uh, use the concepts that I presented to you to graph uh, some data regarding the, you know, the situation that's going on now with, <clears throat> you know, virus and stuff. But um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we 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 know how to track linear, uh, nonlinear data, data data table. Then after that, let's see. Should have probably just did it in the column. Graphs, uh, right? And then motion maps, and then everything else, right? I mean, that's been our mantra from going all the way back to our CVPM, where we were looking at uh, uh, data. Linear data, x versus t, graph that data, the slope of that data gives a velocity, then we did a motion map, then we and then when we looked at a motion map and did the graph. So we just, you know, we've been toggling with this forever. And this is really kind of like uh, a way, a subset of how you're gonna present physical data. It's very a very good um, way of uh, doing the part of the scientific method where you are interpreting and evaluating your information by data, data tables, graphs, equations of lines, motion maps. You're giving the reader every bit of information to verify your claim, your hypothesis slash definition. So it's just uh, different ways of, of um, satisfying the conditions of the scientific method. So we don't have a demonstration today, but we will uh, incorporate that. So let's start off with our definition of work. So work in physics is defined as the product that is multiplication. You know, when you math is a product, two times three is a product. Product of displacement. and a constant net force. Typically, uh, in, our, in our situation, we're gonna be looking at constant net forces. You can't have non-constant net, force, net forces where the force varies over a distance, over a displacement. Um, so I should have just said, you know, generally speaking, it's a net force. So I, I wanna I wanna do that because it's it's not, you know, forces can change. Right. So we just say simply put, work in physics is defined as the product of displacement and a net force. We know what displacement is, is change of position. Imagine that you have a box, you have a string attached to the box, you're pulling that box to the right. That force that you're providing on the box multiplied by the displacement of the box is work. You do that right, do that left, up, down, it's all work, right, by definition. Um, and let me um, continue. Work can only be produced if the net force and displacement are in the same direction or opposite directions. I'm 
I'll put it in parentheses. Both of these quantities must be parallel or anti-parallel, opposite. What does that look like visually? Suppose you have a box, you have a force pulling this box over some displacement. Let's say that this is a displacement arrow and here's our net force. So this is parallel or same direction. This is what I meant by parallel. Got that, questions? Force times displacement. So now let me go back to the first part of that definition. Well, I'll continue on when I get there. Get outside of my notes there. Any questions there? So this is the same direction, force times displacement. Can you scroll up a little bit? Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so, um, and then if it's in the opposite direction, so in this case, this force is, is just one force, or you can just say, by definition, it's the net force. When the, when, the, when the net force and displacement are in the same direction, you can produce work. Um, in another case, if they are opposite directions, so this case would be like a, a string pulling a box to the right. Um, how about you have a string pulling a box to the left? So this would be, this would be positive also. Even though it's in the, they're both in a negative direction when you multiply them, two negatives make a positive, right? It's gonna be positive work. This is still, parallel or same direction. Let's say you have the force of friction in there. Friction is always, as you remember, is gonna always go against your motion. If you are moving to the right, friction goes left. You're moving to the left, friction goes right. So we can still have work in that situation because we have the force of friction. Say this is still my box, right? And if I'm moving to the right, you know, um, if I let go and it's just sliding or something, I have delta x here, and my force of friction. If I were to label this uh, appropriately by a free body diagram, uh, we typically will label friction um, in this fashion. So we have the force of friction that is in the opposite direction of the motion or the displacement. So we can still have work done because the force here, the net force here that's uh, set up by friction is opposite the direction of the displacement. Um, opposite direction or anti-parallel. So I see you got that. Any questions so far? These are all cases where you can perform work. The force and the displacement must be either in the same direction, as we see here, or in the opposite direction. They can never be parallel to each other. They can, but there won't be any work produced if these two vectors, displacement and force, are perpendicular. So for example, I guess I'll do the second um, case two. If this guy was just sliding and he was moving to the left, delta x, and then I have friction going this way. So that's still a case where we can have work. All of these orientations are with respect to the x, y plane as you may have noticed. So in the first case, we have 
you know, uh, delta x, net force. Those are going to be positive because this is a positive x direction, both positive. And even in the other case, they're both positive because two negatives make a positive multiplied. So we have, so x, y plane. That's our orientation, that's our perspective. So if we were just drawing this out, to set up a problem, put it in our perspective, just make sure that we know what we're doing. So this is my x-axis. Put the x over here to confuse that. Right? <clears throat> so I can have work being performed. These are both positive. Um, uh, work situations. Then if I had, in the case of the third example, my force of friction is going to be going to the left. That's going to be negative. My displacement is right. When I multiply those together, I'm going to get a negative number. So the work in this case is going to be negative. We'll see that when we get to the equation. I'm just setting this up right now as a demonstration. And in this case too, positive, well, the friction is going in a positive direction as the displacement is negative. So all of these cases, you can produce work because the conditions are satisfied between the force and the displacement. When the force and displacement are in the same direction that is parallel to each other, they have an angle of zero, we get to that. When they're parallel or moving in the same direction, you have work. When they're opposite direction or anti-parallel, you have work. If they're perpendicular, no work. So, and that looks like this. So, case of no work. When the net force, let's say is here, and my displacement is there. 90 degree angle, no work done. We'll have appreciation with that when we see the equation. But I'm just given a prelim. Those are the conditions of no work. Cannot have work. If the net force and displacement, I usually don't write this word out, but you know the symbol for it. If they're perpendicular, we'll see the reason why soon. Parallel or anti-parallel, you're good. Perpendicular, no. And we're going to get to the case, what if the force is at some angle with displacement? Say, for instance, it looks like this. We'll get to that. Because that's also, that would be a very good question if anybody had it. What if the force was at an angle like that? Do we have work? Or is there work? Or, you know, what, what's going on? You might need to, I'm gonna change the slide. Does anybody need to continue writing this? That will continue. Okay.
All right, one second here. Okay, so let's continue. So as we were saying, the work performed by those examples Because equations are used to predict the future. You know, we can have to just draw every scenario. We can just get an equation, put any numbers in there. We can get what we want to get without actually performing the operation. We've seen enough data so far. Now I can see uh, after a displacement of five meters, I can figure out how much work is going to be done after 500 meters. I don't have to keep graphing it. So the equation for work, we got the definition up top. Force times displacement I should say net force because that force could be one force, can be multiple forces to make up a total. So the one force could be the net force. One is one, or one, two, three, four, you know, 10, you know, whatever the net force, all right? Uh, so it could be one force or many forces. So it's a net force times displacement. Summarize as W equals um, okay. net force times displacement. Let's just say net work equals net force times displacement. Work equals force times displacement. This, you know, it becomes interchangeable. W net. Net delta x, seen that from way back there. Displacement. Anybody remember what displacement is? Change of what? Position. Position, yes. Thank you, Sophia. Yes, change of position. It's, um, it's the difference between a final point position minus initial point position. Same thing. Of course, it'll be integrated into the problems. You don't have to, I don't see many problems where you have to just do this operation first in order to get the work and multiply by the force. It's usually given displacement of this. Okay, I got a force of that. What's my work or change around, solve from something else. I have a work, I have a displacement. What's my force? things like that. The units of work are joules after James Joule in the 18th century or 19th century doing 1800s, uh, doing many experiments in the concept of mechanical energy, conversion of mechanical energy uh, thermal energy into mechanical energy, uh, working on the engine cycles, uh, a lot of work in thermal physics, James Joule, mid 1800s. So he's an energy guy. And for reasons uh, we'll see, you know, Joule, capital J. So if I had a problem where I had uh, uh, you know, I'll just do this for now. Let's say I had a force of 10 newtons, displacement of five meters, my work would be 50 joules. Okay. 
I have a 10 Newton force I'm pulling a box to the right for five meters. I'm performing 50 joules of work. And it's an energy. We'll see why it's an energy when we get to when we get to rearranging this equation around in terms of this new concept of energy called kinetic energy, because kinetic energy is the energy of motion. While I'm pulling the box to the right, it's moving. It's the energy of motion. And then we're going to get into the energy of position. We have a box in the air and I let it go. Box in the air is still staying still. It's potential energy. Let it go. Kinetic energy. And we're going to see that the energy that it had at the top and the energy that it has at the bottom is the same for what we call a conservation of energy. We're saving it. That's down the line. And we'll do the same thing when we go to conservation of momentum. Start with momentum, we can conserve it. So that's why they grouped them together, momentum and energy. There are two conservation principles in physics. We have conservation of charge, conservation of mass, it's kind of pretty much. Because you know, we talk about conservation of mass, we're talking about relativistic physics, we're talking about uh, e equals mc squared, where we're taking the amount of energy, a, 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 you know, amount of matter, mass, converting that into pure energy. So there's a conservation there. Some is lost and you know, all that, but overall in the universe of things, we're saving it all. So energy concepts, starting with work, build up. Um, so we've seen, um, okay, so let's see, I'm just going to do rote writing. Um, write my notes as they are. In larger form, pull a box. Now we got this box to the right. Okay, we've seen that. Where I had um, uh, mm -hmm. net force times displacement gives me work. Okay, I have. I'm going to the right. Um, we'll see that that's an there's an acceleration associated with that. Where there's a change of velocity, change of position, change of energy. Blah blah blah. Okay, we've seen that. So what if in the same picture, we had more than one force. Okay, we've done that. So in the first picture, we have the work performed by that force that net force, whatever it is, a pull. Let's say in this picture, we had a pulling force and we had friction, which is always over here. Then the net force in this case would be the combination of the pull to the right and the friction to the left, because now the net is made up of two forces. I can have a third force at some angle or something. I can have as many forces as I want add them all together vectorially, and I have a total net force. So let's say it's going to the right. For cases of simplicity, I'm gonna erase this to show that this force of pull is gonna be greater than my friction force, which visually we can see that it's gonna to go to the right. I'm just telling it's going to go to the right, so we'll just see it visually. The friction is there, but it's not as strong, or it, it, the pulling force is stronger than the friction. But if the friction was stronger than the pull, it come, it's going to eventually come to a stop. So in either case, we can get the work that's done by the pulling force and the work that's done by the, the friction force. It just Now, now our perspective uh, just changes. So, so basically what I'm saying is that we can get the work that's done by the pulling force and the work that's done by the friction force separately. Then you can add them together to get the network or net force. So this is moving right. Then the work will be 
net work is equal to the pulling force is positive minus friction because it's negative to left delta x still going to the right so this is why we uh, generalize the equation to say network because network is going to be a combination of forces or one force or combination okay so that's what we saw up top so let's see so we got all that any questions need something to write rewriting it Keep in mind the definition when I go to this next example. The next example involves that force at some angle. Remember, you can only have work by conditions, by the definition, well, not definition, but by the uh, experimentation, really, to produce the definition of, you can only have work if the force and the displacement are in the same or opposite direction. Before I do that, like I was saying, I can get the work that's done by the pulling force separately. You'll have questions to say something like, um, and, and looking at that picture, what is the work produced or performed by the pulling force if the pulling force is 25 newtons, right? And you have a displacement of three meters. Well, I can get that work separate. The work uh, done by the pulling force is the force pull delta x, 25 newtons times three meters, 75 joules. Okay, what is the work done by the friction force if the friction force is um, five newtons for the same displacement? Well then work done by friction is gonna be negative um, five uh, newtons times three meters gives me negative 15 uh, joules. So then the net work would be what? Anybody? Remember net is a total. What's the total work in the system? I have two, I have two uh, works. I have work done by the pulling force or work done by the friction force. Adding those two. I'm sorry? Adding those two? Yeah, you add them. This is what this, yeah. Remember, 75 plus minus 15 is? 60 joules. That's the network, 60. Don't let this be, don't, don't overthink it. It's, just an, it's an addition. This is an addition problem. Two plus two, four, net. Don't, don't overthink it. Oh, Jules. So the network in the system is 60. The individual works, you felt you figured them out. Then if the problem says, what's the net? Okay, add them together, 60 Jules. And that positive number will tell you something about the direction of the pull. Positive work? It's going to the positive direction, it's going to the right. Negative work, it's not necessarily going to the left. Let me amend that statement. The positive amount of work, simpler than that, tells you that the box is going to accelerate. The negative work, and in case you have negative work, the box is going to decelerate or come to a stop. And it, the force that causes objects to slow down is the force of friction. So anytime you have a negative 
um, amount of work, that box is slowly coming to a rest. Or energy, energy, energy of motion is being lost out of the system. So if you're losing the energy that's keeping you moving, guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to eventually stop moving because you're losing the energy of motion. It's just a preliminary concept. Um, so let's go to the case where I have my displacement right and my force is at an angle. Ooh, that defies the definition. It's not in the same direction or opposite direction. It's at some angle. What do I do with that? Does anybody have any ideas? Can I do work here? I'm at the airport, I got my bag. I'm pulling it like this to the right. Question, is there work being done here? Yes. How? Because you're exerting energy to pull the bag. But look at the look at the vectors. They're not in the same or opposite direction. How do you know there's work? You don't. You just said that there is. I just want you to explain your reason why. You're correct. There's something that has to happen in addition uh, to this picture to make your claim true. It's true, but we have to show it. Anybody else have an idea? We get the components of the vector. The, like, that they are For some reason, I can't really hear you. Say that again. We find the like the x and the y components of the vector. OK, well, it's going to be one of those vectors, x or y. A force. Yes, a force. OK, which, which one is going to be the important vector component? So uh, is that Rita? Yeah. OK, because I got to put my headphones on next time. What Rita said, no, I'll just repeat it, is that there is work here. Sophia, I think you said that. Yes, there is. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. But remember this, when a force, when a vector like force is at an angle, like it is, it has two parts. Like Rita said, there's an x part and a y part. The the part of this force that's in the same direction or opposite, the part of this force that's in the same direction as the displacement is the X part of the force. So this is going to be, so it's got some angle. So the part of the force that's in the same direction as the displacement is the cosine or X part. There is also a Y part that we call the sine. I'm just going to do this, I guess. The sign has, is irrelevant because it's perpendicular to the displacement. Remember the definition that we just had. You will be seeing that many times, of course. The sign part of this force, in this case, cannot do work. The only part of this force that does work is the cosine part of the force because that part of the force is in the same direction as the displacement. Therefore, we must generalize our work definition because we must account for the reality that the force can sometimes be at an angle. The net work is going to be, generally speaking, F net cosine theta times delta x. Remember in the easy case where we had delta x and force, the angle between these two is zero degrees. We'll see that more in a moment. Therefore, in this easy case, cosine of zero is just one. So you're just saying F net delta x times one. And you all, you know, going back to your math classes, if something is multiplied by one, you just, it's an understood one. So you don't write it. That's why in the first case, it's F net delta X. 
because the angles are zero for same direction. So this is my generalized or the generalized work equation. We consider angles because sometimes we're gonna have the angle. Okay, so So let's look at this again graphically so we can get a better appreciation for what we just did there. If we take a look at the xy plane in terms of angles, we know that this direction is zero degrees, 90, 180, 270, and then back to 360, going all the way around, right? Cosine of zero is just one. Cosine of 90, anybody? You can put it in calculator if you want. Zero? Zero, emphatically. <laughs> Not a question mark. Cosine of 180. Negative one. Yes. Cosine of 270. Zero. Yep. And cosine of 360. One. What we've done here, a number of things that's going on here. It's a periodic motion. It's a, it's a cosine function. But what we've said is we, we, we've generalized the operation of uh, these vectors. So we said before that, oh, if net force and displacement are perpendicular, no work. Well, we've just shown it mathematically. If the net force is here at 90 degree angle from the displacement, the angle between the two is 90, cosine of 90 is zero, therefore there's no work, All right? The mathematics is important so we can you know, rigorously prove our statements. So, uh, Let's say in that previous example, so um, let's say I have friction this way and displacement that way. The angle between these two is 180 degrees. Tell me where you can speak it out. Okay. Cosine of 180 is, 100, is negative one. This is why the work done by friction is negative because the angle between friction and displacement is 180. Cosine of 180 is negative one. Therefore, the number is gonna be a minus number, negative number. So going back to our general equation, this is what you wanna use at generally. Um, I say my, I just have friction and that's going to be given as uh, 160 Newtons. The angle between the friction and displacement is uh, three and the angle between the two is 180. The work that's performed is going to be 160 cosine of 180 times three. Cosine of 180 is minus one. So this becomes negative 160 times three. Like we said before, remember five and three, negative 15. Well, we just proven it mathematically why it's negative. This is going to be uh, multiply anymore. Um, so 480, right? <laughs> Negative 480 joules. Will the object speed up or slow down? Negative work. If you were listening, 
This means I'm losing energy. What do you think is gonna to happen to the object? It's gonna slow down. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna slow down to a stop, I'm, I'm braking. Cause I'm losing the energy of motion. Friction is responsible. Friction will always be responsible. Thank you, Daniel. Correct. Friction will always be responsible in slowing things down, taking energy out of a system. So when I mentioned before about this thing called conservation of energy, um, you cannot conserve energy if there's friction in the system because friction will never stop taking things away. So what we do with conservation is we, for the most part, ignore friction, which we can because for the most part, say for instance, you're dropping a ball and um, dropping a ball in the air, there's really a small amount of air resistance when we do that. So we can ignore that friction. But if there's an appreciable amount of friction, like if there was a gale force wind and we're trying to drop it, well, it's obviously going to get knocked out. We're going to drop it. So I can't ignore that friction. But most cases I can. So if I can ignore friction, I can save my energy. But in this case, um, can't ignore friction as well. In this problem, there's uh, only friction in it to well, produce this negative, negative work. Um, so that is, so again, um, you can't do work. Again, that goes back, you know, we, we, we set things up, hypothesize, whatever, we did an experiment. I oh, you know, I can't do anything. My, 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 my meter, my, if I had a so-called meter that could register energy, but okay some device that tells me i can't do work i mean i get a zero number if i pull it up as the guy goes to the right because they're perpendicular to each other well we just show prove mathematic mathematically why that is at least this case if the if the angles are 90 and 270 there's nothing happening and then even better for you. The start of a cosine function. It all relates. One, zero, at pi over two, negative one, at pi, zero, three pi over two, and back to one at two pi. Periodicity, there, th this has a connection to wave motion, the, 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 the periodic motion of a, a mass on a spring has kind of the same or similar relationships to this work concept. So you're starting to see physics as it, uh, the big pictures unfolding, connecting concepts. And get to waves and, and even more so out of this out of this we can extract the uh, physics of music because of different frequencies of the waves that cause, cause different pitches hence why sometimes if you were to pull a box and the sound that it makes it registers a particular decibel a particular pitch it's it's, it's all in there Okay, so I think that is, uh, I want to end with have a little time to go breakout rooms. So right now, why don't you access the McGraw-Hill book to at least in your uh, physical textbook or online, uh, it's uh, I think online is page eighty-four, but in the text it's um, page two thirty-seven. Mr. Kelly. Yes. When will these notes be due? Um, you know, usual time, probably twelve thirty.
I got to make a slot. Mr. Kelly, what page did you say again? I'm sorry? Uh, what page were you saying again? Page 237. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to scroll down uh, yeah we're gonna scroll down. page 237 okay let me see if i can share a screen here okay after example two we have the additional practice and so we got to go back to example two And um, look at the force and displacement. So it said if they pull with the same force, same displacement, which is 30 meters. Remember, force is net force. D or delta X is a displacement. And they say now the angle is 50. 50. How much work is done by the rope? Um, I can see the picture, but I'm assuming that it's going to be something like this. <laughs> Displacement is delta x d, and we're looking at the force, the part of this force that is perpendicular or parallel. <laughs> as parallel to the displacement, which will be F cosine theta, where theta this time is 55. So the work done is F cosine theta delta X, 55, oh, keep saying 55 up there, it's 50 degrees. So 55 uh, cosine of 50 times 30, and that's it. So every time you have an angle, you just you know, put that guy in there. And, and this is for things that are done at an angle, you know, off the axis. If on the axis, you know that there's a periodicity, there is a regularity of work, no work, work, no work, work. Up, zero, down, zero, up, cosine, sine, function, up. So what's this going to be? Ah, uh, well, numbers all over the place. It's 255. All right. 255. Anybody with that? 4,917.3. Good. Going, not Newton's. Work is measured in? Joules. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it'll be 4,917.3 joules. And that's how you do those type of problems. So we have this other one here. Last two minutes. We'll just set it up. So. Uh, they use ropes, each of which makes 15 degrees with the vertical. That's the heavy box. The orientation is a little strange. Um, I'm going to assume that the vertical is here. So if they're lifting this box, the box is here. They're on opposite sides. Um, 15 degrees and 15. They use rotary, each of which makes them 215 degrees. Each person with 225. That's a little cumbersome problem. 
So now we want to get the work that's done in this direction because the displacement is going to be. So, so for example, let's say that they're they're just lifting it up right there. Whatever the orientation is, they're standing on something, they're lifting it vertically. And so that upward displacement will be 15. And then we have to get 225 cosine of 15 twice because it's two people. So that's as we wrap up the class today. So we'll just leave it at that. But anyway, we're going to have to do, you get the picture, we're going to have to do 225 two times 225 cosine of 15 times 15. And that'll do it. Okay, see you next time. Please turn this in. I'll make a slot. And um, I'll look out for an additional homework. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend, Mr. Kelly.